Hey, it's Chris. It's been a while, over a year actually. Uh, and the bees are in fall yards. So they are getting ready there while we're trying to feed them up and make sure they've got good winter brood nests for next year so that next year we can have a good year. This year turned out for us, at least in our area, to be a decent honey crop. Uh, although the winter and fall was not great, but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about easy loaders. Uh, this is a 125MH, oh, pardon me, RH, which means it's a rear mounted model. Uh, the MH are the deck mounted model. So the RH is a rear mounted model that goes on the rear, or you can put it on the rear of a truck, a rear of a, rear of a trailer, front of the trailer. But it's 2017, so there are some parts that are missing and some stuff that needs to be gone over. There's some metal that needs to be repaired. All the electronics have to be gone through to make sure that it is running at 100%, and then that one will be for sale. Um, this is early September, so you know, if you're watching this in December, you can still give me a call. I mean, it might be there, but maybe not. Some of the other things we're doing, <clears throat> I should have brought a coffee so I could be like, Ian. There's a, a 300MH that had a bit of an oops in install, so there was some electrical damage. And we got to repair that, find the gremlins, make sure that everything's working. And this is, oh, back of the trucks in the way, there you go. That is a new one that is set up and on its way to a customer as of tomorrow. We will go deliver that one. And I'm going to take that one. I will show you some of the stuff on that one in a little bit on uh, just operational. Some of the new things that have happened, some of the things that we uh, have been added by Easy Loader to make it better. Yeah. Oh, there was a trailer. I don't know if you can see it anymore. There's there. It's got, my, got a hot tub on it right now that I repaired. But when the hot tub gets off, then we're going to put a 125 mh on it. And yeah, mm -hmm, bit of a long walk. Walk, 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 walk. I love fall. Fall means that winter's coming and all the stuff that you didn't get done, you don't have to do until next year because snow. There, in that crate, there are two. There's a 125 mh and a 300 mh. Uh, the 300 mh can be installed on this 20 foot trailer, um, but I am a uh, 16 foot trailer coming in two weeks and I will put it on there so that we can use it for demoing because it's easier to get around than a, than a 20 foot but if a customer wants it eventually we can put it into either the 20 or the 16 foot and uh, that 125 mh is going to go on this other trailer here unless somebody picks it up before that but that one is also for sale so so there's a brand new 125 mh and the one and the, and the 2017 125 mh so those are in stock, I think is what we called it, which is a very odd thing. Never have stuff in stock. So, anyways, we'll just go take a look at this quick trailer because this thing is, this is a brood of a trailer. I mean, this is, uh, it's a 12 foot trailer, perfect for the 125s because they've got about a 13 foot reach, 12, nine foot reach on them. So we put the 125, on the front of this don't mind my hot tub a little bit of damage had to repair it but this trailer is a very heavy duty trailer it comes with ramps LED lights mud flaps um, two fifty two hundred pound axles so this thing is 10,000 pounds it was meant for hauling uh, machinery for a company that ended up not taking their order so we got it for a good price. So that price we pass on to the customer. Isn't that a bonus? So that 125 can go on that trailer. Um, or you can get the 125 separately. And if you want that trailer, you can have that trailer by itself. I don't care, I, I'm easy. But anyways, let's go take a look at this one. Oh, there. So look at that little poochie sitting on the porch over there. You can't see that. He's right over there, tiny, tiny little guy. Yeah. We see we can go and play. Pippin. Pippin, you want to play catch? Hey, buddy. <laughs> Yay. Mosquitoes are terrible this year. But he's very excited. Yeah. Trying to keep him in the camera. Yeah. Ooh. 
Sniffer's working. Okay. So, here we are. This is the uh, 300 mh. As you can see, there, where is it? There it is. 300 mh. <clears throat> A couple things that are new. I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay, just a couple things that are new-ish are the level sensor has been put into a plastic box. Bluetooth has been moved directly underneath it for better communication and also um, water protection. Another thing that is added is here's a voltmeter added so that when you are operating at this end at the control panels, you can read your voltage. Because uh, one of the first things we ask or we will ask or we want to know if you have any issues with your easy loader is what voltage are you running at? So that's a very important add-on to that. Um, outriggers, we had, instead of using the slider version, have a hinged outrigger. I should do this drop pin in. If you're wondering why it is directly under the pocket, it's because I hate hitting those things with my hip. So if it's under the pocket, then it's protected, I'm protected, and so on. So basically the same idea on both sides. You can drop it down. <clears throat> if you adjust this, then you have very little cranking to do. And all you need to do is for it to be a little snug. And do the same thing on the other side. Now in this box is where our electronics are. So, so this is where your batteries are. We've got some spare room for uh, the uh, uh, extra forks. For your box forks with your handhold grabs, owner's manual, and your two deep cycle batteries again. Positive on off charge for your battery so that you can disconnect your power to your unit completely. And this is a switch since it's in a trailer, uh, we're putting it in here. <clears throat> if this was in a truck, we would, this switch would probably be in the cab of your truck. If you had mounted it to a truck, that would be ideal. So we'll turn that on. This here is also an 8 amp. Uh, trickle charger so when you are at home at night uh, you can just plug it in there's a hole there extension cord just pop it in there and now you are being charged all night long not you're being charged your unit is being charged so we got everything on <coughs> close that down that is watertight as much as we can make it right now we can see we got 12.8 volts in here Another thing that we have added, or they have added, I should say, is this plastic box. So this is a watertight seal now, so that the motherboard, the main board, can't get uh, wet other than, I mean, there's, there's moisture in there, you can still get that. But there is a, a gap in the bottom here for your wiring to go through, as well as for moisture to uh, get out if it does get in. So, spare set of keys, if you want to lock it up. And we're at 12.8 volts. These machines need to operate at 11.8 or better. Basically, if you go below 11.8, you will start uh, tripping the safety features on it so that it doesn't want to operate, so that you can't get yourself into a bad situation. So, drop the clamps there. So once you have your um, why do I not have a memory? Once you have your jack more clamps released, <laughs> that's what they're called, jack more clamps, uh, then you want to go ahead and turn the machine on. You, we were, we've already turned it on inside the box, so now we will turn it on here. In the center's position, this is now the machine is on. If you're working at night or you want the lights on, one more click, and now you will have it on, plus you have some LED lights here to see what you're doing. We want the level, <coughs> automatic level, is off you need to do that so you can raise it and now we're going to release a uh, cable on the winch this is so that we can get our cradle out 
And I think I have to put the camera down to do this because I need both hands. <clears throat> so again, down on the winch, just releasing some cable so that our cradle is, we can move it. And that lever is the lock to keep your cradle in place while you're traveling. So don't uh, don't forget that while you're packing up and going someplace, because uh, we do have uh, uh, some cradles have gone missing, bounced right out. Okay, now we will just put this on the back of the deck. Okay, so to put your forks from the stowed position into the working position. Pull the pin, just give it a half spin, or you can hold it out if you want. Turn it. You have holes in both directions for storage and then for work. So now pull it, in, pull it, push it in, and now it's locked into place. And you do that on both sides, and you're good to go. This is the uh, optimal position, by the way, if you are using, uh, if you're trying, to, if you're lifting two-way pallets. If your hives are on the ground just a single hives on brood chambers you can still lift them i mean on bottom boards pardon me if you, you can still lift them by simply putting the fork in the bottom hole position here by putting it there and locking it in this spacing between here will fit typically between the cleats of a bottom board so you are able to lift just <clears throat> individual hives on bottom boards um, and then that that has the strength for that so that's no problem so let's get the other one in So your machine is on, now you want to connect your cradle to the uh, uh, Bluetooth unit, which we've seen before. Pressing in the up position, it will come on and say that it is disconnected, press up to pair. You press it again, and now it is paired, and you can see that the load cell has gone active, and now we know how much weight is on the load cell. But now you're operating your winch from your controls here. Down, up. And if you want it down and up, you can use both sides. On here, you also have your brake. You have a weight menu. Press and hold. Press and, oh, there it is. Now, using your hand controls, you can move up or down. You have totalizing on, totalize off. You can set your tear. You can clear your tear. You can display it in kilograms. Or in pounds. Oops, sorry, I missed that. There it is. Display in pounds. To set anything, you're going to use your light button. So now we switched it from kilograms to pounds. So to put the machine up in the air, we've got our cradle on the ground. We've got uh, wire extended or rope extended, I should say. I'm doing this because I'm basically doing this one-handed. Uh, you wouldn't have to. You could actually keep the cradle in your hand if you wanted to or put it down on the ground for safety. But with our level off, we're going to just press the up switch, and that's all it's going to do to raise that. And we'll just hold the up switch until it clicks the, uh, there is a switch. In between the post and this white and the white uh, mast, there is a switch there, and that switch basically tells you that the mast is in the full upright position, and now it actually unlocks the rest of the controls. So if at some point in time your machine isn't operating, it might be something to check the switch in there. Let's see if we can go around and see, take a look and actually see the switch itself. Oh, hard to see, but yeah, there it is. So that switch, if that is not depressed against the mast or the main post, uh, it, you don't have full function. So if you're having problems, then just make sure that that switch is actually active. Uh, one way to test it and make sure you're pressed up against it far enough is to just put a hive tool in there and just give it a press, make sure that it is depressed. And if not, uh, you know, if you have to, you can force it up against. But uh, yeah, best way to probably is just to make sure the switch is depressed and then operate, just go back to your uh, up commands here, put your auto level off and just make sure it's all the way up. And then once that button is switched, you should have uh, operation again. All right.
So next, we're going to pull this, which is going to release that clamp and which will release the boom. But before we do that, we're just going to press the level to make sure that it's level and doesn't go swinging around. So before we do that, now the auto level is on. Now we'll press the level. Now the unit has leveled itself. So now when we pull this, again, pull the pin out and pull it. Now it is released. It's still kind of sitting there. That's a good thing. Now we'll get it out. So that's pretty much it for getting it uh, ready for work. Now you throw some weights on there. Uh, and we'll do some more videos on how to uh, set your home position uh, to reset level, those types of things. If you're finding that you're not uh, exactly in level, there is a level button on the uh, cradle, which you saw before, but we'll show again. So if you're working with the load and you're out at full 16 feet, and you find that it's got a bit of a dip to it, okay, and you're out in this area, press your level button, and the machine relevels itself. So now we're level again. So that's pretty much it. Now let's, uh, let's put this baby away and uh, plug it in for night so we can take it to the customer tomorrow. And to do that, we're gonna go back. Something I should mention here, very important. Do not do ring around the rosy with this thing. If you go around and around and around and you get, uh, I think, seven turns, your seventh turn is your death turn. That means that you basically will have ripped out all your electrical wires by that point. So if uh, whichever way you do it, if you're unloading it the way I have done it here, where I'm coming off to the driver's side, make sure that you work your driver's side when you work your passenger side. Whichever way you got to the passenger side, you're going to come back to this point to load it again so that you're not going around and around. So whether you go over the tongue or whether you go around the back of the trailer, make sure that you do that again when you're coming back so you don't twist up the wires in there. That's a bad thing. All right. So to put it back into position, we're going to put our clamp back in and lock it with the pin. Now, it's a bit of a trick. Swing your main boom into place. And then end boom. I'll give it one more try. There we go. And we'll set it back on the ground again. This is gonna be so much editing work, it's insane. Okay, now to lower it, I'm gonna to have to put this down again because this is a two-hand process to start it, but your auto level has to go off, okay? Then you're going to pull your down, you're actually going to press the level button, and while you're holding the level button, you move this switch to the down position. Once it's down, when you do that, it's going to find the proximity sensors which are up there, each of those rings has a, is, uh, is, is the stop point for a proximity sensor. Each of those rings is a, a stop point for a proximity sensor on each of the cylinders. So once they line up, then it will start dropping itself back down. And once it starts dropping it back, sell itself back down, back down, then you let go of the level button and it will just put itself back to bed. All right, so let's do that. Again, auto level is off. We're gonna press the level button and the down button. If for some reason it passes the proximity sensors or goes the wrong direction, just let go and try again.
there it is. Now you can let go of the level button and it'll bring itself home. Don't like that. Now, put our forks into stow position. Put the cradle back in its slot. Oh, I'll show you something else here. There. Now we'll put the jack more clamps back on, tighten up the winch, go from there. But this remote is rechargeable and it is being charged by a contact unit here. Similar to what your iPhone or whatever has, when you lay it on a contact pad, that's what it's doing right here, is it's recharging the remote batteries. So if you're gonna replace these batteries, you have to use rechargeable batteries, keep that in mind. Wait a second. All right. Jack more is in place on this side. There. Tighten up that rope just a touch more. There. Now we'll turn the unit off. Go to the other side. Put that jack more clamp in. Now we put away our outriggers and we're ready to roll. Now, before we do that, let's make sure we switch it off. If for whatever reason you do have to, you can always uh, kill your power right there. That is to do a reset on your battery or your main board or whatever. So that's your main battery kill. You can leave that on. If you turn that off, your Bluetooth unit won't be recharging. So best to leave it on unless you have to turn it off. No, well, we do have a sealer on here. So this is supposed to be as waterproof as possible. Nothing's ever 100%, is it? So, outriggers, opposite of what we just did. If you're out in the field and you're doing a lot of light work, um, you know, you're using, you're not using supers, you're just moving empties around or something like that. It's quite possible that you won't even have to use your outriggers at all, but they are there for your safety. And it also helps with auto level because if you're, if you don't have to, uh, the trailer isn't dipping on the axles and the springs. That just means that you have, you'll be, power on your batteries because it's solid it's not moving so you're uh, you're not fighting the movement of the trailer itself on the axle so um, these actually save you some power in the long run save your batteries so I like them I would use them if at any point in time you are uh, you know after you've got you gone through your operations uh, in the manual which is uh, the full full instructions here is basically a shorter version of the entire raise and loader and 
close loader after use. That's right there. So if you need a refresher or you forget after the first couple times, after you've done it a few times, I don't think you'll need that much anymore. But it's there. So anyway, try and cut this down to something manageable. And uh, like I said, once this is uh, once we get the next 16 foot trailer in, then we will uh, do uh, that one. Will be a demo unit, so I can actually keep that one around for a while. So that one I can actually go through more uh, putting on your hand hold forks. You can do that uh, maintenance, some uh, some of the repairs, that type of stuff that you might have to do. So uh, we can get into that in the future. But I think I've said that before, so I'm just saying it again. Now we're gonna go plug this thing in. Quick look at the underside of those uh, outriggers. Bolts holding that on and one inch steel. So I don't think it's going anywhere. I should hope not. But you know, like everything, if you got a unit like this, uh, you need to check your electronics, you check your hydraulics, you check your, uh, your welds, check anything like your trailer, like these are the type of things that we all should be doing regularly. A lot of us don't do it regularly, um, but that is what's going to keep your machine uh, lasting a lot longer and safer to use. So, anyways, that'll do.